Hi, my name is Kara Darling and I'm the clinical administrator of Lighthouse Complex Care. Um, we have two clinics, uh, one in Delaware and uh, one in, in Colorado. And um, we are dedicated to making sure that our patients uh, are um, safe and from all, all kinds of um, pathogens, but particularly um, COVID. When you come into our clinic, um, we utilize um, what we consider our Swiss cheese layer model. These are our Swiss cheese layers of mitigation that we employ in our clinic to make sure that our providers and our staff, as well as our patients, um, are safe um, from, um, from COVID-19 infection. And so when you walk in the door, you'll obviously see some of these layers visible. First of all, you'll notice that in our reception area, you're not gonna find a lot of people hanging around. Um, we are you know, doing the sort of wait in your car until your appointment model. Um, and then you know, one family will come in at a time. You'll just let our um, fully masked and properly masked receptionist know you're here. Um, and then you'll, you would go directly into an exam room to minimize contact with anybody else in the clinic. And we have our carbon dioxide monitor visible for um, everybody to check their ventilation. We have far UV. My little arrow off to the side is just showing that we also have an air filter here that you'll, you'll see in a minute. So um, just wanted to point out again that there's multiple layers when you walk into our clinic that are keeping you safe. So our first layer is universal masking. We definitely want to make sure that everybody in our clinic is masked. Um, we make sure that people also wear their mask properly. If people don't have a mask when they come into our clinic, we provide them at no charge. Um, all of our staff and, and, and everybody who comes into our clinic will wear a N95 quality or better um, properly worn mask as the first layer of uh, mitigation. Our second layer of mitigation is that we post our, um, our carbon dioxide levels. We use the AirNet, which is sort of the standard kind of classic um, monitor. Ours run pretty consistently around five or 600, and that just lets you know that you're not rebreathing a lot of the air that other people have breathed out. We also have at least 12 air exchanges in occupied spaces. And so, again, we're cleaning the air. We're constantly making sure that we are removing um, viruses and um, even you know airborne bacteria, dust, pollen, any kind of pollutants, and we want a minimum of 12 um, air exchanges per hour in every occupied space. But we use the healthy glows in a lot of our spaces. This is that other side of the reception area. So again, you're not seeing the chairs where we're asking people to sit there and congregate. So we're well ventilated, we're masked, and we're cleaning the air. Then we've also added a, even a step further, and that is the FAR 222 uh, nanometer UV um, lights. And we are really excited about this because it's really a game changer in terms of being in a public space to have a light that will actually um, be actively killing COVID in the air um, and continually killing COVID in the air. So we really like our sterile ray units. They, um, this is a 60 watt sconce that's right in the, the entryway and it covers our whole reception area and even down the hall almost to our um, uh, first exam room. And then we're installing these also um, in our exam rooms so that we can um, make sure that, especially again, like I said, if we have you know, the special needs patient who can't wear a mask, we, we know that we have these lights that are also killing COVID um, if they're, you know, they were to happen to be uh, asymptomatically infected. Oh, and then we do have the 150 watt saber that is portable. So if we um, are going to have, for example, we have a, co uh, a couple of patients that come in and they have their case manager and their personal aide and their, you know, their loved ones are with them. And so there might be, you know, extra people in uh, in a space. We can always pull the, the saber in for extra um, disinfection. We also use it on the staff side, if you know, if we're having a you know a, a meeting or or more people in a space, um, and we just want a little bit more um, uh, protection, then we can uh, we can bring the saber um, uh, in addition to the, the the sconces into a space. Then we're still universally testing here, um, and we're universally testing with the um, best test that we could get for um, that was still cost effective for us to absorb. So the we do take all major insurances, um, so we're not a private pay clinic. We take Medicare, we take Medicaid from several states, 
and um, we absorb the cost of the mask and we absorb the cost of the testing because it's really important to us that this is universally um, accessible to our patients. We don't want cost to be an impediment to people staying safe. And we don't just test the patients when they come in, we also test whoever's with the patients. So again, it's a it's a universal testing model. Our staff tests twice a week. Um, and But anyone who else who comes in the door, they come in, they go directly into the exam room. The first thing we do is their um, antigen test to make sure that we don't have any asymptomatic infections hanging around um, uh, that could throw us off even with all of our layers. So, and then the last thing that I say is our, our uh, sort of our layer, final layer is that we are a um, hybrid clinic. So we have virtual visits available. Um, anything that we can do virtually, we, we will. Um, our Denver clinic actually is still operating completely virtual. We were, we were an in-person clinic until 2020, and then we pivoted virtual, and we haven't actually brought that, back, that, that clinic back into a public space yet. Um, but our Delaware clinic opened in July, but still, even through our Delaware clinic, you are welcome to have a virtual visit. Like I said, say you had some symptoms you were worried about and you needed to talk to somebody, but you didn't want to come in and, and, and bring that, or maybe you're just still avoiding the public spaces like a lot of us are to avoid infection, um, we do give patients that option. And so um, it's just really important to us to be accessible um, healthcare, um, to be quality healthcare, and to avoid um, any breaking any trains of transmission that we want them to stop with our clinic. We want people to be able to safely um, get the, the healthcare that they need. Wow, this is so great. I'm wondering what the effect has been of all these measures on your customers and your patients and your staff. What's been, you know, what's everyone been saying about it? Well, I mean, beyond just, you know, not catching COVID or transmitting, you know, uh, COVID infection, what um, I really found and what I also experienced personally um, is that our clinic offers a relief from the anxiety of having to seek health care. I mean, already a lot of times when people are coming to their health care providers, it it's, might be uncomfortable. They're, they're sick or something's the matter. It's not something that we all just go, oh, hey, you know, this is a great activity to have fun on a Saturday night. I'm going to go to the doctor. We all have a reason, right? And so um, having to have a layer of anxiety on that. Okay, so I'm going in there and am I also going to catch COVID on top of that? Am I going to have to deal with long COVID and, you know, the, the sequelae that come with that. Um, I'm just so worried and stressed about even being here. How am I going to absorb the information that my healthcare provider is giving me? Um, what we've noticed is that we can take all that away basically for our patients. And so while it's still a little stressful to come to the doctor, if you know that in our clinic, our providers care about keeping you safe and we've set up the clinic to give us the best odds to stop any transmission chains. It just seems to be a sort of a sense of relief, like an, an oasis um, for patients to be able to come in and get the health care they need without having to worry about, you know, catching a disabling virus. One important thing is that people don't don't despair. Um, and a lot of times when I see um, people look and it seems overwhelming because, you know, there's there's no mandates anymore. Uh, people are not generally masking. Um, there are tools out there, though, like we know if you're in a good quality mask and especially a fit tested mask, then you are really, really increasing your chances of avoiding um, the virus. Maybe maybe you don't know about the at home NAT tests that are PCR, you know, like quality that you can access, or maybe you've never heard of the you you know the far two to two MUV lights that are safe for you to be in um, and occupied spaces and can you know help kill COVID in the air. Um, so keep looking for those tools. Keep reaching out to communities like WHN um, or some of the other um, COVID in communities that are around, and keep finding those ways to do the things that give your life meaning safely. Thank you so much, Kara. We really appreciate you taking the time to share all this with us. Um, and all of the information of how to find Lighthouse Complex Care is gonna be on the screen. Um, thank you again, and hopefully we'll get a chance to talk again soon. I would love that. Thank you so much. And for all the work that the, the World Health Network does, we really appreciate it.